Uh, I'm going to read a story called Soggy Sandy, and uh, the narrator is actually a guy, so I want to tell you that so you're not picturing me having this conversation. <laughs> okay. Soggy Sandy. Although Soggy Sandy earned her nickname in pre-K because of her tendency to pee her pants, it was per the perpetual globule of snot hanging from the tip of her nose that made the handle stick. This was extremely disconcerting to anyone who sat anywhere near her, and since her name was Sandra Glass and mine was Kevin Gillespie, we were joined at the hip until the sixth grade when they separated the boys from the girls. In the fifth grade, Soggy sat next to me instead of in front or behind, so I had a full view of her profile, her nose, and her nasal mucus. For this sin alone, I feel vindicated when Sister Leilani got booted out of the nunnery for screwing the kickball coach in the boys' lavatory at St. Vanessa of the, Great, of the Blessed Grotto. We called her Sister Lay, L-A-Y, instead of L-E-I, uh, with smirks and giggles because, of course, we all played kickball and we weren't blind or stupid. Occasionally, I still wonder if the fifth grade kickball team was actually responsible for calling attention to uh, her, uh, sorry, uh, re actually responsible for calling attention to her indiscretions. Anyway, the all, before all that blew up, Sister Lay used to walk the aisles between our desks, smacking the palm of her right hand with her stapler, trolling for cheaters. And although I wasn't very good at math, and Soggy Sandy was, I never once cheated. It wasn't her answers I found fascinating. It was her snot. It was mesmerizing. There it was in the morning, glistening in the slant of sun coming in through the window, uh, its loose roundness seeming right on the edge of dropping. There it was just after lunch, the same one or a new one. I was never quite sure. I couldn't help but wonder what she, how she could eat her gigantic vegetarian sandwich her mother made every day with all that leafy curling lettuce and not end up with a snot ball getting chewed up with the bean sprouts. And there it was in the afternoon Bigger than ever, that damn bulb of nasal discharge actually swaying with Sandy when Sandy raised her hands. This is what it was like day after day, all day long, soggy Sandy and her slimy booger, me just waiting to see it let go and slop onto her test paper. It thrilled me to think that Sister Lay would be locked up in the convent at night grading Soggy Sandy's math quiz, her ferocious nun hand sliding over the very spot that held the snot. Cheater, cheater, Sister Leilani's industrial-sized swing line stapler snapped, snapped at the end of my nose. I jumped, got tangled in the metal legs of my desk, and in my attempt to twist away, the chair jammed into Sister Lay, who started to fall into Sandy, and then, as if in slow-mo, she grabbed Soggy's wet nose, mucus globule, and all. A loud, ew, slithered through the classroom. I was terror-stricken. What was my mom going to do to me? Nuns were like virginal demigods to her, and I'd actually pushed one into a juicy booger. I stared at the penguin's red and puffy face, then looked for Soggy, who was lost somewhere under Sister Lay's black habit. Between us, Mike and Bobby and me, we got the sister up to her feet and pulled Soggy free. The thing was, I'd always been so enthralled with Soggy's nose, I'd never really looked at her before. She was pale from her ordeal, her dark eyes wide and kind of luminous and the band holding her ponytail had broken, and all this soft brown hair was pushing up against her face, and the infamous red snout with its spectacular snot was gone, and in its place was a little freckled and surprisingly clean nose. It wasn't long after this incident that Sister Leilani was ordered to turn in her habit because of her other habit with the kickball coach, who by the way was allowed to keep his job, 
And by the beginning of sixth grade, and after they split up the boys and the girls, everyone started calling Soggy Sandy, Sandy, with an I, including me. Turned out, I was the one lucky enough to eventually marry her. <laughs>